hi guys today we are going to discuss about petroleum geology and i am dr gulam ahedin sohail first of all here are some of key learnings or questions that you should answer after studying this subject oil how oil and gas form what is the composition of oil and gas and how oil and gas are formed how do we find oil and gas in the subsurface and there are some other questions that you can answer about petroleum geology petroleum geology is the study of origin occurrence movement accumulation and exploration of hydrocarbon fuels it refer to the specific set of geological disciplines that are applied to search for hydrocarbon Here is a typical subsurface structure. You uh, will say it trap in your future study of petroleum geology. This is a specific trap that accumulate oil in black shape. As you can see at the top of, there is a black accumulation of oil, and this. zone is called reservoir rock and there is a shale above this rock and also a shale present below this and this particular layer that contain oil and gas this is a particular scenario in which oil can accumulate and we will study about this trap in detail in petroleum geology how this trap form the oil and gas migrate how it accumulate what are the property of this source rock and reservoir rock all these things will be studied in detail in this subject okay uh, origin of petroleum first question is what is origin hydrocarbon are generated when large volume of microscopic plant and animal materials are deposited in the marine delta i or like a strine environment there are different deposition environment you already have studied in your physical geology subject so i will not go in detail of those you can look into these deposition environment in your previous notes and when plants and animal material deposited in the subsurface and some additional material deposited on it and after passing a million of years these plants and animals converted into oil and gas is a simple mechanism the organic material may either originate within these environments or may be carried into the environment by river stream or sea the microscopic plant and animal material generally is deposited with fine clastic material just like silicon here is a typical picture of uh, a source rock you can say where oil and gas form actually here are some black spot you can observe in this microscopic image these actually representing the organic matter which means they were formed after the deposition of remainings of those plants and animals and these are now have converted into uh, are going to convert into oil and gas these black spots that you can see in this uh, section that is of a material which contains organic material okay during burial the sediments protect the organic material by creating an an oxic mean oxygen depleted environment this allows the organic material to accumulate rather than be destroyed by aerobic organisms such as bacteria over time the organic remains are altered and transform into gas and oil by the high temperature and increased pressure of deep water this process can take tens of thousands of years to occur or even millions of years the amount of petroleum generated is a function of the thickness of the accumulated sediments and organic material the burial of these materials and time organically rich black colored shale deposit in a quite marine oxygen depleted environment are considered to be the best source for i will explain a little more here your remaining of animals and plants 
they need a specific environment for generating oil and gas. What that specific environment? That is that should be the should be the marine or oxygen depleted environment where there is no existence of oxygen. And also some other factor like temperature and pressure are also important. Temperature should be to high up to a certain level that can help to convert these animals and plants remains into hydrocarbons. Migration. Actually, the hydrocarbons are lighter than water, so they will move to upward or move to up or in upward direction. And so that process is called migration of hydrocarbons. Primary migration is the process by which petroleum moves from source beds to reservoir rocks. Source where it was generated, and reservoir where it was accumulated. Secondary migration is the concentration and accumulation of oil and gas in reservoir rock. This is if it moves within the reservoir, that is called secondary migration. Evidence that petroleum does migrate is suggested by very common occurrence of active seeps where oil and gas come to the surface either directly from the source of or from the world. If you have visited the Diji Khan area in Pakistan, there are, there are a number of seeps on the surface. People can uh, collect some oil from the surface because it's coming from the subsurface and it is the evidence that it's migrating and migration process is going on. Similarly, there are a number of examples in the world where these seeps happen to the surface and again here is the example here is the your reservoir rock you can say uh, if it accumulate here and move further then you can say it, it going to be secondary migration is going to be happen but if it only accumulate at one place after this migration you can say uh, it is primary migration it's migrated and accumulated. There is no secondary migration involved in this trap. And this is a reservoir rock where uh, the migration happened individually. And this shows that my, uh, oil or gas migrating from source to the reservoir. And also one more thing is that uh, as you can read shale here on the top of this reservoir as well as you can read the shale at the bottom of this reservoir. Both are shale, but the properties are different. At the bottom, mostly in the world, the shale that is generating or where the oil and gas was formed, it is organically rich. And the shale that making the roof of this trap or, or on the upside of this reservoir it is not necessary that it should be organically rich. It can be organically rich, but not necessary. But at the bottom, if the shale is organically rich, it will definitely produce hydrocarbon or and those hydrocarbon will migrate into this reservoir. So both of shale are important, but they may have different properties. Okay. In either case, the petroleum had to migrate through rocks with enough permeability and process. These are very important terminologies. You may have listened about these or studied it about permeability and process. I will explain here very simply. The permeability is, uh, is the property of the material where the pores are interconnected. Means the fluid can flow from one pore to an other pore. And prostate, it is the volume of pore that present in the material. Later on, we will discuss in detail about these properties. Actually, these properties help to migrate the oil and gas. Therefore, migration involves rock properties and fluid properties, including the petroleum moving through the rocks. Okay, some of the rock and fluid properties include prostate permeability, capillary pressure, temperature and pressure gradient, and these are all the properties that help to move the oil and gas from one bad mean from shale to reservoir rock. 
Okay, here is another example that is the magnified macroscopic image of a sandstone reservoir. You can say this is a reservoir rock where the pores are interconnected. The pore spaces may be occupied by oil and gas or water. This is from the gas producing reservoir. Even here you can identify the black spot. These are surely accumulation of oil and gas in these pores. Even there are some minor uh, Species you can observe with black, those are also there is hydrocarbons in those pores. The pores are interconnected. Okay, let's come towards the basic hydrocarbon chemistry that is also important, although it is relevant to chemical engineering or some people who are studying chemistry in detail. But as a petroleum geologist or as an as a geological engineer, you should aware about some basic of hydrocarbon chemistry. Petroleum is a, is a general term for all naturally occurring hydrocarbons, whether gaseous, liquid or solid. It is not pure solid, you can say it is semi-solid. It is both simple and complex and is composed almost entirely of carbon and hydrogen. That is important. The main elements of hydrocarbons are carbon. Okay, let's visualize. First of all, it is the methane molecule where one carbon and four hydrogen atoms. In a petroleum reservoir at 100 degrees centigrade temperature, methane exists as gaseous form and decane, that is another form of this material, it exists as liquid. Here is the formula for decane, and this is atomic structure. And this is the methane, and here is its structure. And similarly, if you increase the number of carbon, you can see the chain is going to be increased. And also observe their boiling point temperature, how much they differ, and how they differ with the number of carbon attached with hydrogen. So this is the basic, you can say, chemistry that gives you some idea about how carbons, number of carbon change, and how their properties are going to be changed. Okay, the numerous varieties of petroleum are due to the way carbon and hydrogen can combine and form different size molecules, thus creating different molecular weight. So, different chemical property they have. Okay, a hydrocarbon molecule is a chain of one or more carbon atom with hydrogen atoms chemically bonded to them. At room temperature and pressure, molecules with up to 4 carbon atoms occur as gases. Molecule having 5 to 15 carbon atoms are liquid, and the heavier molecule with more than 15 carbon atoms occur as solids. Okay, here you can again visualize if they vary from C1 to C4, they are mostly occurring in gaseous form. You also say uh, these are natural gases. And here are different from methane, ethane, propane, and butane. And okay, here is another form that vary from C5 to C7. Um, in this, it exists in the form of naphtha. Naphtha is also a form of liquid, that is yellowish liquid. So that's why this is a specific terminology for it. But you can say it is a liquid. And it is different from gaseous carbon hydrogen combinations. Similarly, you can observe here is a gasoline. Uh, here I didn't mention the detailed formula, just mentioned the carbon, how much carbon they contain, C7 to C11. The usual practice is to indicate the number of carbon atom in the molecule as shown above. Gasoline actually consists of a mixture of hydrocarbon, C7 to C11. The octane number of the gasoline tells the percentage of octane, C8, it contains. So all of these are gasoline. Similarly, here are paraffin. Paraffin consists of hydrocarbon from C12 to C15. Here are other groups of hydrocarbon, hexane, cyclohexane, benzene. And also there are some other groups, cycloparaffines and aromatic hydrocarbon. 
in this image you can see three models of hydrocarbon molecule that all have six carbon atoms hexane is an alkane cyclohexane is a naphthene naphthene you can say it is a semi liquid and benzene is an aromatic hydrocarbon the solid form of those hydrocarbon and as soon as their chemistry will change the properties of hydrocarbon will change you can go into your chemistry book and you can identify which are solid which are more semi solid and how these chemical formulas change with their physical appearance or with their other properties you can look into detail in these in your chemistry books okay some petroleum contains hydrocarbon molecule with up to 60 or 70 carbon atom the molecular structure of hydrocarbon can vary from simple straight chain to more complex branches as well temperature affects the chemical structure of hydrocarbon and can break heavier long chain molecules into smaller and lighter molecules okay guys this was an introduction to some of composition and to some of basic trap of that structure where oil and gas are related okay this is the end of today's lecture and this was just introduction and also i was interested to run some demo for this video recording so that i can check its quality so let's go through it couple of time and try to understand the basics of this petroleum geology and hopefully in next lecture i will give you some detailed idea about books as well as some other uh, topics that we will study in detail in this subject okay thank you and bye